Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I will show you how to diagnose any issue with the cooling fans on the Saab 93 and will attempt to fix the issue so let's see how it goes. This car in particular has a weird issue where you can hear the fans kick on and off rapidly. However the steps I'm gonna follow will help you diagnose any issue from overheating, aircon related issues or if you have codes stored in the ECM. As you can see there are no codes stored in the ECM to help the diagnosis so let's see if we can activate the fans through the scan tool. And luckily yes we have bidirectional control of the fans. This is very helpful from the scan tool as it explains how the ECM commands four different fan speeds through the grounding of different combination of wires at the fan control module. The four speeds are indicated by percentages here at the scan tool, so 25% is speed 1 and so on. I can hear fan noise at speeds 2, 3 and 4, but not at speed 1. Let me just make sure neither fans are running at speed 1. And yes, both fans don't run at speed 1, which already give me a clue of what's going on since they run at other speeds. I moved straight to the fan control module, wanted to check its powers and grounds and signal ground coming from the ECM. The connector is stubborn so you have to be careful and take your time. Pull the flap first then separate the connector. There was lots of dust surrounding the connector, but it was clean inside with no signs of corrosion. I printed the wiring diagram for the module and laid out a combination of pins being grounded at each speed. The module is indicated by the box in the middle with the 706A label. It receives two grounds at pin 2 and 5, two main powers at 3 and 6, and three control inputs from the ACM at pins 1, 4 and 7. Let's start with testing powers and grounds first. For that I hooked my test light to the battery negative. When I touch a power feed the test light should light up. I started with pin 3 then pin 6. And as you can see we have power at both pins. I next move my test light to battery positive to test grounds. When I touch a ground the test light should light up. Let's test pin 2 and 5 and both indicated a good ground. Let's test ground inputs from the ECM. My test light is still connected to battery positive. Remember the table I created for the different combination of inputs. For speed 1, pin 7 should be grounded. And as you can see, when I command speed 1, with the test light touching pin 7, it lights up. Since my problem is only with the speed 1, I should have stopped by now as we tested all the required inputs and that points out to a faulty fan control module. But I will test the remaining inputs to teach you and show you what to expect. For speed 2 the ECM will ground pin 4 and it tested good. For speed 3 the ECM will ground both pins 4 and 7 
And since we tested these already, I'll skip them. However, for speed 4, the ECM will ground pins 1, 4 and 7. Since we tested 4 and 7, I'm only interested of testing the ECM ability to ground pin 1. Additionally, I wanted to test the output from the fan control module at speed 1, just to rule out any weird issue. For that I unplugged one of the fan's connectors and tested for battery positive with the fan commanded at speed 1. Bingo, no light. That confirms a bad fan control module. Replacing the module is easy. Disconnect the main cable, disconnect both fans connectors, remove one T20 screw and pull the module up. To help you pinch the metal ring at the fan connector, use a screwdriver to pinch it while pulling the cable. I use a T20 socket with a quarter inch drive to access the screw at the bottom of the module. Once the screw is out, all you have to do is pull the module up. Here is a comparison between the old versus the new, or at least new to me. Installation is the reverse of removal, or at least that's what Thomas said. I'll have to say that when testing heavy power consumers like the fans, the horn, the starter motor, etc., I usually use a higher amp test light to make sure there is no voltage drop at the circuit. But since we have all the speeds running fine except speed 1, that wasn't of a concern to me. In addition, take a great care when testing inputs or outputs to any ECU, not to cause any damage. For this purpose, I only use incandescent test lights. After finishing the installation, let's test if we have speed 1 back and further test all the speeds. And that was a big fail, as we yet have no fan action at speed 1. If you want to know what went wrong, wait for part 2. In the meantime, I'll leave you with the wiring diagram 
Thank you boys and girls for watching and remember if you are not a subscriber consider subscribing. See you on part 2.